your token creatives. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. Hello and welcome to Your Token Creatives. My name is JD. My name is Julian. And we are so excited that you're back for episode three. We've had a lot of fun in the first couple episodes. It's been cool to hear your feedback. So thank you for everyone who has reached out, who subscribed, who's actually listened. We appreciate everything. One thing I do want to say is that a lot of people have been mentioning like, hey, I see you do like video clips. Like, do you want to do like a video podcast? And I'm kind of of the belief I'm like, does anybody watch video podcasts? I don't know. Julian, are you a video podcast person? I mean, not really. I mean, like, I literally will turn a video podcast on and just, like, listen to the audio. Yeah. Like, I don't actively, like, sit down and, like, watch it. Yeah. But it's like, if it's on YouTube, you can pull it up. Yeah. You don't have to watch it. Yeah. But I, I've heard from a number of people that, like, they actually watch video podcasts as if it were, like, a TV show. Which is really interesting, where I'm like, I mean... Makes sense. Like my brother specifically was like, if there's a podcast, I'm probably only listening to it if it has video. Because I want to watch my podcast. And I was just like, huh, okay. Which, I'm just curious, like, maybe we're just in the minority here. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, I wanted to say, if you would like a video podcast, please follow us on Instagram and shoot me a message that you would actually watch a video podcast because it is a little bit more work, to be honest. And I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, go go send us a message uh-huh. if you want. But we love doing the show. It's been fun so far. Yeah, we had a fun conversation about Adobe's AI last week. Have you used that tool anymore? Like the... Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> You're like, it's actually replaced all of my work this past week. I've been, just, I've been using it for like just textures and backgrounds and random things. And it's just like... Like, because actually you... You had mentioned just like, yeah, like this could replace like stock photography. And I was like, wait, what if I use stock photography but without people and like without, you know what I mean? Just like having yeah. like just textures. And wait, so, can it generate like textures? I had not, mm-hmm. that is brilliant. So you could do like a paper texture, or like a scratch. Yep. It can generate those. Yeah. I've been able to generate it. I've been able to generate like leaf textures or like, yeah, like tree bark. Bro. Yeah. That's ama- I that is actually a genius way to use. I can't believe we didn't talk about that last week. Yeah. <laughs> You're brilliant, but that makes so much sense because I've, I mean, I've paid it so much money for like designer packs that'll be like the dust pack, <laughs> and it just <laughs> makes my designs look dusty. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. really? I'm paying twenty bucks for this? Or like, I don't know. It just feels like, I don't know. Bro, Especially the- when you get like four images of dust, and I'm just like, how long did this take this person? But I need it right now. Like. Yep. But yep. you could AI generate those. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And then, like, granted, I mean, like, it's a it's a JPEG, you know, so it's not a PNG. Yeah. So you got to do some work on it, but like, yeah, it just it clean it. I mean, it's a clean image. Yeah. So, dude, I'm still mad because I don't have access <laughs> to this beta yet. I I after our episode last week, I literally went to the Adobe website again. And I was like, all right, I just got to try it again, or like, from the right email. And it was like, we'll let you know soon. And I haven't heard back <laughs> yep, at no. all. So to be honest, I didn't even realize I had access to the beta until like. Until I just happened to be on their website. And I was like, I wonder if I have access. Oh, so you just wandered into it? Yeah. Must be nice, bro. <laughs> Must be nice. But no, that's so smart to do the texture thing. I'm sure there's a million other uses like that. Like, uh, Especially, oh, yeah. it's, the, it's not even the full launch yet, which is crazy. Yeah. And like, it, it, I mean, it's decent. It's clean. Yeah. yeah. So, no, that's sick, bro. But yeah, it was a good conversation. Talking about AI and ownership. And if you haven't listened to it, please go back and listen to it. Because it was very interesting. And we'll probably uh, allude to it in the future when we talk about AI inevitably again, which we're not talking about today. Well, I can't promise that, but yeah, I'm not planning does. on talking about <laughs> it today. <laughs> but yeah, go check that out if you haven't listened to it yet. And yeah, so for our little news portion, I had an article that really just struck my interest as a designer, as someone who appreciates good design. And uh, I mean, it's kind of news, but it's more that they just kind of like drop this. And it's like a legitimate thing that McDonald's put out. I don't think it's like from the American McDonald's. I don't think this is a concept that would necessarily like do amazing in a giant market like the nope. US. Anyways, but it's super interesting. And this is not in like brand design as much as in the realm of like packaging design, which we don't do a lot of through token. I'd love to get into more packaging design because it's super interesting to think about how branding can actually be incorporated into like real life products and like the blurred line between the two is yep. like 
uh, it's so obvious that it's like you need to have branding touch every aspect of all the physical goods that you're selling as a business. But this one particularly struck my eye because you don't see a lot of fast food companies innovating in the package design space. Like it's pretty much been the same thing always, you know, <laughs> like the way yeah. that you package a burger is the way you package a burger. Like, and I guess, you know, a lot of companies have done more like sustainable things where they're kind of minimizing stuff. But this is kind of the opposite of yeah. that, where they're kind of maximizing the design of a thing. So, anyways, I saw this video clip that I showed Julian. Can you describe? What this so McDonald's is releasing this box or has mm-hmm. released this specialty box that holds their items. Can you like describe it? Like, what is this thing? Yeah, so it's like you know, definitely. I feel like language wise, I definitely feel like that was Italian, like this commercial was in Italian. Yeah, I couldn't figure it out, but I only speak English, so that's <laughs> probably my problem. But yeah, I was, I was like, yeah, this, this sounds it, it was it was enough. That it was like, okay, this is like close to Spanish, but not quite Spanish. So yeah. I was like, I wonder if this is, I feel like it's Italian. Okay, yeah. But anyway, so like it starts out with like, just like, you know, people just walking into McDonald's and then just getting like this huge like McDonald's box. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it looks like a kid's meal box, but like on steroids. Yeah, it's <laughs> you <know>? gigantic. <laughs> it's Actually, huge. Like the, the clip of the dude carrying it out, I was like, what is in there? He ordered the whole store. For real. It's For real. Nuts. For like a second, I was like, "This man can't like ex- fully extend his arm down." Yeah, because it might actually hit the it ground. Would, <laughs> <laughs> you would need wheels on the bottom at that point. But <laughs> for real. But like, so basically, it's just it, it, it. It's just like they walk out McDonald's and then they go out onto the street, and there are like. Like the poles, you know, mm-hmm. like like the metal or like concrete poles that are just like around, like as blockades. And it's literally you put this box on top of it, and as you put it up on top of it, it like morphs into a table. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like a bar height, you know, it's a bar height table. Yeah, and it's meant for you just to be able to like eat and drink at a collapsible like cardboard table. That can just be propped up now on like any type of pole that's around you. Yeah. It's kind of nuts too, like the way that it unfolds because it holds your food and then you take it all out and then it can kind of like unfold into this like, it is like a flat surface. Yeah. And then there's also like cup holders in it, right? Yep. Yeah. It's got cup holders and then like, you know, you could take out the cups and like, but now you have like a solid like surface. Yeah. And it's, it's just completely portable. Yeah. It's brilliant. Like it honestly makes so much sense and like I think it probably makes the most sense in a metropolitan area cuz it yeah. it does like at least in the example that they showed with it, it very much like is meant to go on those little like pedestrian pole things that stick yep. out in cities, you know, like they're basically like the car crash barrier, yep. but they're more aesthetic looking things. Like <laughs> it's meant to go on that. So it needs to be an area that has those, but also like it could like in the park, like you could set it down and it mm-hmm. just kind of like could be off the grass and be like yep. a small little kneeling table that you could sit at. Yep. And so it's just like super interesting to see a product that's specifically like for, I don't know, like eating at like a table. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like fast food is so in the world of like grab and go, like let's make this minimal as possible. You're probably going to eat it in your car anyways. But this is very much like, no, <laughs> yeah. let's like have a meal at the table together, yes. but on the go at the same time. Yes. And I feel like there's not a lot of other fast food companies who are like trying to do stuff like this. Like, But I love when it's like you're trying to push the bounds of like what package design is in a specific space, you know, like oh, it's sp- definitely unique. Specifically, I mean, just the way this package is, is like, as you put like, as you put it on top of the pole, like, that's when it begins to like morph into like this table. Yeah. So it's just like, it just does it as like you're setting it up. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. It's like the pop up tent of like fast food tables. (laughs) It's just like, it just does it itself. And it's just like, wait, what? But it's kind of nuts too, because it kind of creates a whole new like product category. Like, I'm thinking about it and I'm just like, you suddenly took something that is so mundane, which is just like a holder for your food, and now you like created so many more uses that people could take your food into their everyday lives, like no matter what they're doing. Because it's like we could take the table box, the yep. the Mick table. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> called it in the comments, which is hilarious. You could take the Mick table and like go to the park, and suddenly you have this like 
cute sure. little picnic set up, <laughs> like actually at a table, cup holders, like tons of room to spread out your fries. Like yep. it's kind of mess free. I mean, I'm thinking about it too. Like you could also probably put it in your car and then it's like an elevated table oh, on I your console. Like, so it's like if you have little kids or something, like say you're in the minivan, you just like prop up the little McTable yep. and like put all their food out. And like, here's the nuggets and fries. Like, you suddenly just created this whole new way of experiencing the same yep. product that like just never existed before. Dang, I didn't think of that. Yeah. That's actually really, that's actually really smart. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I think it's McDonald's being brilliant about the fact that like they know that people like their food. Like they're obviously like, I mean, we're one of the biggest restaurant chains in the world, but like the main like thing that holds people back probably from buying McDonald's is like the experience of eating it on the go. Like, cause you're just like, there's grease everywhere. There's like, you know, wax paper everywhere. It's just like, it's not fun. (laughs) Yeah. To eat it. So they're like, well, if we can just make it easier for people to eat or less messy or feel like some kind of elevated experience to like eat this, then it's like, boom, you've automatically like tapped into a new market of people who are literally, it's not just the convenience of the food, but it's like, how nice of an experience is it to like eat our food? And you just elevated that. And now it's like, you brought so much more value to those same burger and fry items that like existed before. It's just like now an elevated experience, you know? Yep. No, I, I think that that's a really good point, specifically with that, because like, you know, ultimately, like I believe, like we're in a situation now, culturally, where people are more worried about the experience than anything else, and so to like be able to elevate, like really cheap food, you know, you yeah. know to be like, oh, you know, like okay, this is like, yeah, it's a little, it's a little fancier, yeah, You're like okay, like this, this is good, sure, like definitely hits more people, and like it just broadens your target audience, yeah, and you're like thinking about it. It just like I don't know. It's really interesting to think through like package design from this perspective because it's like it's solving a problem that you didn't realize was a problem, yep. right? Like I think everyone's just come to accept it's like if you're getting McDonald's and you're eating in your car, it's gonna be a bad experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be messy. You're gonna have to clean off your ske- steering wheel, like especially if you have kids. Things are just yep. falling everywhere. And it's like I feel like they're them just trying to be like, let's innovate a way to make this like a better experience. Cause like you can't change the food to fit the experience better necessarily because it's burgers and fries and it's what you do. It's a part of your brand already. But it's like now we're creating like this additional thing to just like make it an elevated experience. And I feel like when you're competing in a space where like Chipotle exists yeah. or something, where it's like Chipotle is probably one of the easiest things to eat in the car because it's all in a bowl. I mean, I guess unless you get like tacos, like a weirdo. Yeah. But like, <laughs> if you're getting the classic like burrito <laughs> bowl, it's like it's all you know, it's all there. It's like yep. I mean, it might spill over a little, but like <laughs> overall, you're not having to touch it. It's a fork in a bowl experience, and yep. it's like yeah, that's a great on the go food. And so it's like even though you know McDonald's is still going to be burgers and fries, it's very tactile. You're creating your product to like compete with that kind of like thing now, or yeah. especially in the scenario that they painted out in the video. It's like, well, there's not a place to sit down and eat in a metropolitan area. Like, if you're in, you know, downtown New York City, it's like, what are you going to like find a bench or something? Like, it's yep. just weird. If you have it on the go, just find a little post or just find a little place and you have a little table, you know? It's really, it's really smart. Yeah. It, it's impressive, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. It's interesting to, to look at product design from a perspective of like, what are the problems that we can solve through mm-hmm. this? And it totally fits their brand too. Like, <laughs> you see it and you're like, this is a joke, right? And then you're like, this makes so much sense. Yep. Like, I kind of love this like innovative thinking yep. through like fast food packaging, you know? Like, yep. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's smart. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, you said it, you nailed it around the head. It's a problem that you didn't realize you had. Yeah. Yeah. And I think good product design solves those problem yeah. or those problems, you know. But anyways, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. It's definitely an interesting video to watch. Like uh yeah. well, I'll put the video in the show notes for anybody who wants to watch and see the actual product because who knows if it'll ever come to the US. I I it might stay in Italy or <laughs> those other markets that we might not never we might never see. But uh, yeah, gotta highlight product design when people yeah. are innovating in it because it's definitely interesting. So, on to our main topic of today. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of the better things we get to talk about because this is something we talk about in our day-to-day lives a lot anyways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like from a week-to-week 
we are always trying new versions of productivity software or things to optimize our lives. I think we're both very like organized. We like organization and optimization. What we are talking about today is the best productivity apps that you can use specifically for creatives. So we are creatives. We do graphic design, video work. We handle a lot of different projects. There's a lot of things to being a creative that you need to organize (laughs) or else you're just going to (laughs) drown. And I think... There's a lot of misnomers about the modern day creative that it's like, oh, it's just like, yeah, it's the artist, it's the free flowing thing. And it's like, honestly, <laughs> the best creatives, the most successful creatives that you see out there are optimized and organized and have lists and figure out how to make systems for the things that they do. Yep. And so, like I said, we're the kind of people who like to optimize things, <laughs> like to try new productivity apps. And I thought it'd be an interesting way to talk about this to challenge us is this is the prompt, okay? All right. I want us to decide, as far as all productivity apps go, you have three apps to organize everything that you create and stay creatively energized. And you have to organize everything through only three apps. What are the three apps that you're choosing to use to organize everything that's in your life? Okay. Yep, so, yep, yep. so it's kind of a it's kind of a play on. I was gonna go with top three. I wanted to like I think I originally pitched it to you as like your top three apps that you use every day. Yeah, but I want to think through where it's like we can cover these aspects of what we do as creatives, as designers. Like with this app, we can use it with this, and this is kind of how they play together to be like the big three. Now, I know you're probably gonna be missing features <laughs> by yeah. the end of it, but I want to know like what are your three apps that every creative should use to try and organize their stuff and and stay productive. Okay. Ooh, that's a good. Okay. Yeah, so it definitely yeah, it definitely switches out a little bit. You can take a beat um, honestly if you want to. No, so like okay, I got like I think for me the three apps are the ones that I'm going to use consistently and the ones that I'm in the most currently. Sure. And so like what that looks like for me right now and we had you had said this earlier, like I'm completely Apple, you know. So sure, yeah. I'm just completely in the, the Apple ecosystem. Yeah. So it's three apps. One of them is or one of them is not an Apple app. Two of them technically are Apple okay. apps. Yeah. First one is actually Freeform. Okay. And it's like a newer app from Apple. Huh. And basically Freeform is a a whiteboard. Okay. And like completely like kind of like it's a digital whiteboard. Sure. You know, so like if you yeah. open it up and so like you have access now on your iPhone, yeah. your iPad or your Mac. Yeah. And so you open it up on your iPhone or your iPad. Yeah. Now you could take the pencil, you know, draw whatever notes, write down whatever notes. Sure. Now I'm in my mind processing this as I only have three apps that I can touch. Like that's it. Nothing that's it. else. Yeah, it's to do everything that you do in your day to day as a creative. And so this could also like multitask and like be able to do like handwritten notes, you know, okay. or like be able to like map out things if I need to, like if I'm talking with clients and like yeah. kind of like, okay, like this is kind of like frame wise what we can like create or what we can do. Yeah. So are you kind of like a handwritten notes guy in general? Is that something? Yeah. Cause I know you're a big like Apple Pencil user and yeah. like, so handwritten notes are probably a big deal, right? Handwritten notes are a really big deal. Yeah. And so for me, like being able to visually see a lot of that, yeah, it, like helps me process. Okay. And then what helps me refine is yeah. being able to like type it out. Yeah. So like even just being able just to do sketches, you know, is like going to be helpful for me. Sure. And that's where this app Freeform is going to be like the most helpful. Okay. And what's nice about it too is like you can actually share like your whiteboard with okay. other people that have like Mac. Yeah. And so like if I were to if I were to like make like like sketch out some like mock ups, you know, yeah. I can now send it over to you. Yeah. And then like you could actually be able to like comment, like add to it because it, it's just a digital whiteboard. Gotcha. You yeah. know what I mean? So is this a free app, first of all? Hundred percent free. Okay. Yep, yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so it's and I'm guessing it's like Apple products exclusively. Apple products exclusive. Gotcha. No, that's cool. And so, like, I need something to be able to handwrite, you know yeah. what I mean? And so, and then I also need something to be able to sketch out. Okay. And so, like, that's going to be able to do it. Does it hit every single, like, sketching feature? No. 
Okay. And like, it, it's, it's, it's okay at best. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to ask is like, what is the like interface? Like, are you using this on your iPad mostly or can you use it on desktop or like what? Yeah. So you can use it on desktop, your iPhone or, or my, your iPad. Okay. I typically use it on my iPad. Yeah. And so just because like I always have an iPad on me. Sure. And so like I'm constantly just going, you know, drawing whatever sketches or like, yeah. even if I like want to take a screenshot of something like I saw online, I could take a screenshot and I'll plug it in. Okay. And like be able to like like okay I like this you know dissect it like I like this I don't like this yeah you know this is a cool font like look into this font gotcha. you know give like just mental notes for myself yeah that's kind of cool so like I'm guessing like I'm or I'm thinking like outwardly towards other people who might like want to use this or other creatives who are listening what are like some of the best features that you're like this is some like the best reason you could use this for or like other features specifically that this has that other apps maybe don't. Honestly, the shareability. Okay, yeah. Honestly, because like, because what could happen is like, even if you don't have an iPad, you know yeah. what I mean, or like if you're just working on your Mac. Okay. You know, being able to share it, and then from your Mac, you're able to still do and like participate. Yeah. And like operate under under this app. Gotcha. You know? Okay. Does it share it as like a web link, or is it like you have to have the free form app to share? You it? You have to have the free form app. Gotcha. Okay, that's so, good to know. Like the newer Macs can do it. And like I think it's like it's dependent on like your operating system, like yeah. the newer operating system is going to be able to, okay. will let you do it. Yeah, and then just yeah, honestly, that shareability is like so. Especially if you're working with a team, if you're working with even if you're just like working with like one other person. Yeah, to be able to like have a whiteboard. Yeah, you know, because I mean, like think about like how many times like as as a team or even just like in a in a, in a client meeting, you're you're looking. Where you're talking about things and you're just like, okay, I just need a visual sure. to like help explain something. Yeah. You know, and it's like this is what this app can do for you. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, like great, you know, you wrap up this meeting, great meeting. Here you go. Here are the yeah, like, quick, not, yeah, quick sketch notes that are just like, oh, this is what we wrote down. Or if you needed a visual thing, you have like a little bit of a base to go off of. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's like instantly shareable, mm-hmm. which is cool. Is it collaborative too? Like, can other people work on the same? Yep. Okay, that's kind of cool too. So completely collaborative, like it's it's meant for working on it as a team. You know okay. what I mean? So like, yeah, that's where it's just like if if you have like a team like all around the country, yeah, like I think and it's infinitely scalable. Oh, like the canvases. The canvases. Okay, so you're not going to run out of room to take notes. You're not going to run out of room. That's kind of sick. Yeah, because there's a lot of other note taking apps. That like you run out at a certain point, or it's like, well, this is the canvas; it can only mm-hmm. fit in so much space. But that's kind of sick. Yeah. So like a lot of people probably use like the Apple Notes like app, which has like drawing features in it, right? Yeah. yeah. Is it better than that? I'm guessing. Hundred percent better than okay. the Apple Notes because it's very simple in the Notes interface. I'm pretty sure you like get like one or two pen tools and an erase. Yeah. Like, you're not able to draw or anything crazy. Yeah. Okay. It, it's it's pretty much like. It's pretty much that, but more collaborative. Yeah, you know, Apple Notes is pretty rough. Got you. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, so yeah, it was, it's not really the greatest. Yeah, but like this is definitely. I mean, even just think about like having. Think of it as honestly having like a, a whiteboard in your pocket at all times. Yeah, you know. Gotcha. And it's just like you could always start with a blank canvas. You can always like. Yeah. Oh, I like this idea. Pop it in. Yeah. And it's like okay, you just keep going. Yeah. Do you use it for like designs? Like, do you think you can actually like you could like sketch out a logo or you're like, oh, I need to like, you know, free figure out this graphic. Like, do you think you could use it in that way? Or is I, it- ha- and I have used it that way. Oh, okay, yeah. So like, I I have like sketched out like just like rough ideas of like like icons or or logos, and then just like yeah. screen like take that take that image, import it into like my Mac, like right into Illustrator, yeah, and just start like working onto it. That's kind of a sick workflow, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, that makes sense. So, as far as like the three goes, that's covering all your things. Like, what what role is this filling? As far as like in your and how you're thinking through this, like, so what, what does it cover? What doesn't it cover? So this is definitely covering like initial conversations, yeah. initial like collaborative like situate like meetings. Yeah, and then being able to. Like for me, like I love being able to like write down notes sure. and like sketch out things. Yeah. And so it's covering those type of bases for me. Yeah. But what happens is like my notes only make sense to me. Okay. Yeah. You know, and so like I can only take so much note or so many notes before like even I start getting confused. Yeah. And so like the next app is like my note taking app. And okay. Like that app's Notion. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And like we've talked about this before. Yes. And so like Notion is like how I manage everything else. Yeah. So the limitation with Notion is that even if you use it on like your iPhone or your iPad, yeah. you cannot draw. True. Yeah. There's not like a drawing aspect to it at all. There's nothing. Yeah. It's all text based. Exactly. So yeah. like for me, that forces me to have to type it out. Okay. Yeah. And so that means like I can I can take like those those notes that like make no sense to anybody. Sure. Only really make sense to me, and then go and type out clear, comprehensive notes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then from there, like Notion is super robust in general. Yeah. And so being able to take Notion. You know, you're able to create obviously just like your general notes, yeah. But then you're able to like create databases, Mm -hmm. you know, and then like create different like workflows within there, yeah. You know, and like right now, like Notion for me helps me track. Like I have like a whole movie list of like yeah, you know, like so like even like personal stuff, just personal stuff, yeah, and just keeping track of like bookmarks, links, like different lists that way. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, so like it, it's like I have like my reading list, I have like my movies that I want to watch. Yeah. And then like within there, I can. It helps like create like a database, mm-hmm. and so like I can even like start rating movies, rating yeah. books. Like, oh, I like this thing, I didn't like this thing. Sure. And like it pretty much just like expands on yeah. like whatever I want to expand on. Totally. And yeah. it's really it's a sandbox like mm-hmm. like app. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like a sandbox app when you first like open it up. Gotcha. Yeah. And so like it's you're only like limited to like your creative like yeah. possibilities, but well the interface very much looks like a word doc kind of. Yeah. Like it's very <laughs> yes. simple, it's minimal. And then you like start to dig into the features because I mean you recently showed me Notion and I'm like just kind of getting caught up yeah. in the universe of Notion. And it's funny because a lot of corporate like organizations run on Notion now. I know full businesses that like part of their client onboarding process goes through Notion, or even the whole collaborative design mm-hmm. process sometimes will go through Notion. <laughs> well, and it's like one of those things where it's like, how is that possible? And then you dig into it and you're like, oh, because it's super robust. Yep. Like there's infinite possibilities with the databases and the yep. like all the other tools in it, and that's not to mention even the AI, the AI tools, <laughs> which I'm sure you're going to talk about too. Yeah, yep. but it is super scalable. So, like, I guess in your day to day workflow, like, what are some of the most useful like applications of Notion, or just like in your you know everyday use? Yeah. So, like, a big thing is like, like I said, so like I, you know, I take notes that make sense to me. Yeah. And so, like, I've been able to like. Take like type out like my mumbo jumbo like notes, yeah, like and then ask like Notion because like Notion has AI now, sure, you know, and like ask yeah. Notion, like, hey, can you clean up like these meeting notes mm-hmm. and like actually organize it and put it together? <laughs> and like it just spits it all out for me, which is just nuts. <laughs> it, it's, it's wild <laughs> that that's just like built into this app now, too. Because it's, I mean, I don't even know what you call Notion, it's basically a note taking app, yeah, but then you can have AI. Write notes for you or summarize notes for you based on like just whatever you randomly typed in. Like yep. it's like make this like emailable almost, where you're just like, if this was read by another person, now it suddenly makes sense where my, you know, chicken yeah. scratch notes before did not make sense at all. Exactly. And like, I mean, it even like comprehends like my shorthand, you know, yeah. saying like BC for because and like it'll expand on like those type of notes as well. Oh yeah. You know, or like the W for like with. You know, like it, like it understands, like that's cool. That kind of like shorthand, like it has the autofill features or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just like, oh, okay, like this is what's going on. Yeah. But like that AI feature, like that's integrated in there, like helps me keep track of like all those notes. Sure. You know, and a lot of times, like it, it even helps me create like, like going through a meeting and then being like, okay, like what are my action steps? Yeah. You know, and then like help me like organize like, okay, what are my action steps? Like what are the next like five steps that I need to do on this project? Yeah. And like be able to organize myself that way. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So like, I guess thinking outwardly to other like creatives, maybe designers or people who are like similar to you, like what are some of the other like best features that you're like, you should definitely use Notion for this. Like if you're looking for a tool to do this. This is why you should use Notion. It's good. I think you know. So like, Notion's AI is actually really robust, mm-hmm. and like, Notion's AI helps create a lot of like workflows for you without even like realizing it. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, you know, so like, even if you're like, 
So part of like Notion, right, is that like it allows you to create or allows you to download templates, like yeah. pre-made templates. And the template library is crazy big. Yeah. Like because so many people use it, so many people have put templates into just like the community template page, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so like, you know, like if you're someone who like handles like social media, you mm-hmm. can like, you know, you can download a social media temp like calendar template yeah. and be like, okay, like I want to post on Instagram every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like yeah. Facebook on like Tuesday, Thursday, and like Twitter, you know, like Monday through Friday. Sure. You know? And now it's just like, okay, what do I post? Yeah. And so like this AI can like help you like figure out like, okay, like here are some posts that's gonna help you target specifically for like Instagram. Here are yeah. some posts that are gonna help you target for like Facebook or Twitter. Yeah. And so like I feel like that type of like workflow is gonna be helpful. Yeah, and it's kind of sick. Like, if you've used other text-based AI tools like ChatGPT or other things, like it only has the context of like what you typed into it mm. to that point, right? Like, it doesn't know who you are. It keeps that communication thread like very linear. Yes. Whereas in Notion, you can like build on what you've already written, which is also pages within pages, which is also like a crucial part of Notion too. Is like the organization of like yes. pages within pages within other pages, like so it can pull from this massive. Bit of data that you've already typed into it, and like it has context of everything you're working on mm-hmm. to be able to create these things. So it's like if you're running like a business and you're like, okay, this is in the social media wing in my social media pages, and to create these things, it also knows, doesn't it? Like pull the context from other yeah, parts. Yeah, it can pull like context from other parts. Yeah, and so like you could literally just like tell it like using, you know, so like it, it because like you open it up and it feels like pages. Yeah, you have like you know like you have like heading one or heading two or yeah. heading three. Yeah, and so like you can say. Like this heading, I don't know, like anything talking about chairs. Yeah. You know, create create social media posts talking about like this heading of chairs and like all the information that's under there. Like this chair has wheels, this chair is like <laughs> black, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like it it has like mesh material or it's made out of like metal. Yeah. You know, like it will it'll help it's it's giving it context yeah. to pull from. Sure. And so like it'll just start creating things like yeah. for you. And that's kind of cool too, like if, especially in the workflow that you describe, where you're like taking meeting notes or taking like different specific things, like you're able to, you know, type out all these notes, and then you're like, say you're in a meeting with a social media manager, and you're like, hey, let's let's develop some prompts based on what we just talked about. Like maybe mm-hmm. you're like, hey, we're launching this new product. You're in a meeting where you're talking about that, and then it's like, okay, what can we do for social media to promote? This you know new product that we're launching, then it'd be like generate ten social media ideas while you're in the meeting, yep. and then it's like okay, like let's go talk through these ten ideas. Any of these jump out to you? Oh, this one sounds great. Let's run with that. Hey, Notion, can you type up the description for this kind of a post? Yep. And I almost see it like being used, like you can use it in real time because it's mm-hmm. that fast too. So it's like you're typing meeting notes, and then you can also use it as a collaborative like input into the meeting that you're having. Like it's not just. I think that's what sets it apart is that it's not just like a place to be a notepad. It's not just a notes app. It's Mm -hmm. like it can actually be a collaborative tool to like help fuel things to keep going. You know what I mean? Oh, 100%. Yeah. And like for me, like I just like I started, I'm starting to work on like a new type of workflow for meetings where I start, and I think we kind of talked about this before. Yeah. Where I'm using this app called Otter. Uh-huh. You know, so it's not. This isn't part. This of, isn't your third. Yeah, this isn't my. Third. Okay, this doesn't count. This, <laughs> this is a bonus. App. Bonus app. But it's this app called Otter that basically records like all the audio and transcribes it. Yeah. And so then being able to take like a transcribed like audio meeting. Yeah. And then plug that into like Notion, and then being like, all right, like what are the action steps? Can you know what I mean? And like, what are the key? Like, what were the main things talked about during this meeting? Mm-hmm. And then like. Having like AI being like, hey, can you help me draft up like an email to send back to this client or send back to this person? And like being like, hey, like this is so great, like that we're able to connect. This is all the stuff that we talked about. These are like what we need to work on. Like this is what you're going to be working on. This is what I'm going to be working on. Yeah. And be able to recap like a whole meeting, like and having AI just assist you. So you're not sitting there like, okay, I just spent like an hour and a half in a yeah. meeting. Now I need to send out these meeting notes. Sure. What am I? You know. Like, yeah. I mean, and honestly, you just replaced the role of like a secretary or someone who just sat in, like mm-hmm. on the note, like dictating notes. Because like, it's kind of crazy that workflow when you think about it. But it's like Otter. You can have it on your phone, right? Mm-hmm. It records your real conversation just through the microphone on your phone, and then dictates every bit of that conversation. 
And then it can like summarize different points from the media note. But what you're doing, you're saying you put it into Notion, you summarize like this is what we talked about, and then it's like draft an email based on what we talked about to follow up on this conversation. Yep. And it's able to take the context of the whole transcript that you got from Otter, turn it yep. into an email, and send it right away. And you can do that within the first minute of your yeah. meeting ending. And then you're like, good, done. Yep. Which would have taken forever before. Yep. And also like. I don't know. When you're in meetings, you're not like saving every piece of information that's in there. So the stuff that stands out, like sometimes you miss things. Like there's definitely times in meetings where I'm just like, oh yeah, we did talk about that. Like that was a project that we had talked about doing and I just completely didn't write it down and now it doesn't exist, you know? And now that doesn't happen because it's all automated. Exactly. Yeah. And like I think for me too, like a big thing has been, you know, even stuff like that where it's like, I like we'll talk about like a small, insignificant, like little side project, and it yeah. was like, oh, you know what? They didn't talk about this. Yeah, as like predominantly as another project. Yeah, they may not even care about it. Sure, you know what I mean. And so, yeah. like, completely like wiped it from like my memory. Yeah, and then like two weeks later, it's like, hey, did you end up like working on this graphic? And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and so like in though like in this workflow, yeah, like being able to like catch those little things that like I wouldn't have mentally processed. Yeah. You know, because it would have just been like, oh, that was like a throwaway comment. Yeah. But in reality, it was like, no, this needed to be a prompt into something else. Totally. Yeah. And I see this like, you know, in the day to day corporate life, like if you're having meetings, like in a positional way. But I also think about like the independent creatives or business owners mm-hmm. who are meeting with like clients or potential work all the time. Like it is so crucial to remember every detail that goes on in those mm-hmm. client meetings because it's like, if I forget like one detail, you don't want to follow up later with a text where you're just like, "Hey, by the way, like how uh, how many things did you need again?" Or like, <laughs> "Wait, what, was it a video or did you need like?" Because yep. then you're going to look up professional. You're not going to be able to like put together anything to get back to them on, yep. and it's just going to like be stressful for everybody from the get go. And it's like if you just integrate these few these two tools actually in the example yep. that you're putting out, it's like Otter dictates everything that you said in the meeting. And then notion to be able to summarize it or turn it into action steps after. It's just like then you're focused on like the actual creative part of that project or developing that part of it. You're not focused on the like, you know, am I awkward? Wait, what was I supposed to talk about? Oh, hold on. Did we mention this yet? It's just like, nope, you're just focused on the creative flow, creating a good interaction. And it's like, let the let the robots do that yeah. side of things, you know? Exactly. And then it, it's I mean, it's for me, it's just been it's been a wonder, you know. Like I'm, I honestly wonder, like how much time have I actually spent? Yeah, trying to mentally process these things. Yeah, and have been ineffective in it. Sure, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, because like for me at least, the big thing is like trying to be clear in my communication. Yeah, and like I can easily go and like ramble on and like not be clear in like my thought process or yeah. like try to make a thought process as or like try to get like a, like my final thoughts as I'm like speaking, you know, and so. Like this has just been another way of making clear cut communication when I'm dealing with people. Yeah, no, that makes total sense, and I think that's the hard part, especially in like more pressure filled meetings or different mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, there's times where it'll be like, you know, someone who inquired, and I'm just like, oh, like I really want to make a good impression on this project or something, and I'm so focused on like, you know, that that I'm like, I forget to give them action steps or something, or yep. like, I don't even know what I don't know. And I'm just yep. like, there have been times where I'm like waiting, I'm like, oh, they haven't like followed up yet. And yep. I'm like, wait, did I actually mention what the process is? Did I actually mention <laughs> what the steps are after this point? Yep. And with a tool like that, it's like, well, let's check the, the transcript or even the summary will tell you what to do. So it's yep. like, takes that side out of it, you know? Yep. No. And then like the last thing about like Notion. Like that covers a lot for me too is project management. Okay. Yeah. You know, and so being able to create like a database and so being able to like take a project from like, okay, this is like initial conception. Yeah. This is like, you know, like rough sketches. This is like, yeah, working on stuff. Like, all right, I already sent like this link, you know, for them to review to like a client or something. Yeah. And then like, okay, like these are the changes and then being able to like process like a whole project, but like, do it on like a larger scale with like ten projects. Yeah, you know, like that yeah. handles a lot. Like Notion handles a lot, and so being able to like do that, mm-hmm. you know, is just yeah, dude, that's awesome. So okay, it does Notion cost money or is this another free app? So Notion is free. 
Okay. Um, AI is not free. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so a Notion AI is like nine bucks a month, somewhere around there. Okay. And for me, like I think actually, so I got a couple months free because I was in the beta. Yeah. For like the AI. Okay. And so yeah. I think actually, I think in May is the first month I actually got to start paying for it. Okay. Like they gave me like a couple months free for like, hey, thank you for being in the beta. Yeah. Like now that the alpha's here, you get a couple months, but then you're going to start paying. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, gotcha. I'm like, yeah, this is worth it. Fair enough. But you think it's worth it to upgrade to the paid version with the AI features? Yeah, with the AI features, yeah. It seems like a lot of what you do in your workflow too has to do with the AI or integrating that already. So yeah. it makes sense that you're like, definitely yeah. going to pay for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it seems like, okay, so your first app is really for whiteboarding, sketching. Mm -hmm. Makes sense because you do a lot of visual design stuff or graphic design stuff. So it's like you could take a note or you could just sketch it out. Mm -hmm. Like any kind of those like on the moment ideas you have. You have your your whiteboard in, what's it called again? Freeform. Freeform. And then there's Notion for like more standardized note taking, but also like text-based AI systems, that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, so like that's that's kind of what it's covering right now, right? It's yeah. Like kind of whiteboard and then all of your notes, tasks, you kind of organize the notion. Yep. Kind of. Okay. Yep. All right. I feel like you're covering a lot so far in these yeah. two apps. That's good. The last one is it's an Apple app, and this handles like my communications. Okay. So this is actually shortcuts. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Apple shortcuts. Apple shortcuts. Okay. I'm actually in. You're gonna there. have to educate me because yeah. I, <laughs> I have act- no idea what you're talking about. I'm actually in there quite a bit. So Apple shortcuts. It's like anybody that has an and any type of Apple device has access to it. Okay. Right. And so shortcuts basically is just like in in a, in a nutshell, you like script out you know actions for your device to do. Hmm. And so for me, like a big thing that this app has been helpful for is my communications. Yeah. Communi- specifically communications with people. Okay. And so, um, you know, and like for me, like it, it means like, like I need to text people. I need to, you know, I need to message people. Yeah. I need to email people. And yeah. so a lot of times, like for me, it means that like I'm working late. I'm working mm-hmm. at like 10, 30, 11, midnight, you know? Yeah. Like burning the midnight oil. Sure. Multiple nights in a row. Yeah. Or like I'm up super early, you know, like yeah. five, six. And <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like, huh, okay. But like what ends up happening is like, it's like, okay, I need to message like this person, but it's super late. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Let me create this shortcut yeah. where at like, 8:30 tomorrow morning it's going to message them this specific message that I've already like that I need from them. Oh god, so you can schedule text messages. Schedule text message. Okay. Schedule emails. Yeah. Schedule and like and and for me like I just use a very basic like that, you know. Yeah. Like if I need to like consistently get in contact with people, yeah. Like on a monthly basis or even like a weekly basis, yeah. Creating like automated text messages. To be able to like check in with people, yeah. um, like hey, like how are things going, or like hey, I need this, like mm-hmm. I need that, and being able to communicate consistently with people, yeah. And what I found for me specifically is that I don't have to take notes. I'm like, okay, I need to remember to text this person or sure. set myself reminders or set myself an alarm, yeah. Like I put it in there, and then what happens is these automations and these text messages and like these emails shoot out these communications to these people. Yeah. And it, eventually what happens is at that point, I'm not processing or I'm not mentally thinking like, okay, I need to message like five people today. Yeah. These five different things. Gotcha. I've already set it up. Communications already pushed out. Yeah. The ball's in their court. Okay. They need to send it now back to me. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that that means now I can I can dedicate more time working on something else instead of trying to figure out like, oh man, okay, I need to I need to sit down and like Shoot like shoot out this email or like yeah. draft up this text message to like send to somebody. Yeah, and so like being able to automate messages like text messages, emails, and all of that, mm-hmm. ha- like my communications has been super important for me. Yeah, no, uh, it makes sense, and I think there's so much to that too. Where it's like you're, if you're just relying on yourself to like text yeah. when you can or get back when you can it's just like you're probably going to let yourself and others down at yep. some point <laughs> or i mean at least that's my experience like if i'm just like waiting around to be like 
I don't know. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I'll text him tomorrow morning. I'm yep. probably going to forget tomorrow yep. morning. You know what Every I mean? Every single time. Yeah. Every single time. <laughs> and so, like, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh, yeah, like, I need to text, like, so-and-so. Yeah. But it's, like, three in the morning. You sh- yeah. Like, no. Yeah, you're like, that's going to be worse for everybody if yep. that happens. So, is it pretty easy to set up? Like, do you have to add devices? Is it like a smart home thing where you have to like add things or it's just like connected to your stuff? It's already connected to your stuff. So okay, that's cool. Because it's all like integrated with an Apple, you literally like open it up, you create like this this shortcut where it's just like all right, like what time do you want it to run? Yeah. You set the time and date. Yeah. And then it's like okay, at this time and date, what am I supposed to do? Sure. And then it's just like hit like send a message. And yeah. It's like Who's receiving this message? And so you click it, and because it's you know it has your contact list, yeah, you know you just put in the contact list, or you can type in whatever number, yeah. And then it's like, okay, what am I sending to this person? You just type in the message, and then like you just hit like, okay, at this time I'll run this, I'll run this like this thing, yeah. I'll, I'll do what you just told me to do. That's nuts. So can it do more than just like messaging and stuff? Like I know you said you just use it basically. Like does it do other stuff? Like it gets help? bro. <laughs> is it pretty advanced? Or? It gets super advanced. Okay, yeah. And so it's like it's actually a little creepy how advanced it can actually it can, it can do. Okay. And so like you give it because it's like all Apple integrated. Like yeah. you can give it access to like your phone sure. completely. Yeah. So it's just like oh yeah, like like in ten seconds or in like ten minutes, I'm going to be starting a video. Yeah. Like let me just set up. You know. So in ten minutes, I'm going to start a video. I want you to open the camera app. I want you to hit record, and I want you to wait until like thirty minutes like, yeah. to record like whatever video I'm doing. Okay, and then save it to like my photos app, and then send a copy to I don't know, like your sibling. Sure, yeah, and like it'll just do and it and do this string of commands, whatever it is. It just does a whole string of commands. Yeah, yeah. And can you set up? T- you said it, you can do it on routines, right? So mm-hmm. it's like it automatically generates one, like you do like every two weeks or. Yep. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a super robust like little app that like unless you start digging in there, you would have like no idea. Yeah. But like this app is also like I mean it does stuff even in terms of like sharing like if you're on like a Wi-Fi network, it's yeah. like hey like what's the Wi-Fi password? You can actually create a QR code if you're on the Wi-Fi pass what? like in the in the Wi-Fi network. What? And like share it and the person can scan it and now get like logged into really the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wait, even on iPhone? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the most annoying thing on Macs is like whenever you're in a coffee shop and you're like what's the Wi-Fi password and you're like ah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's it's impossible to crack. Yep. And, I, and there is the way to do it where you go through I think it's it's not activity monitor or keychain access. Keychain access. If you yep. search keychain access, you can find the Wi-Fi network. And then you have to like log in with your like account username password, and then you can see the Wi-Fi password. Yep. But I always forget the phrase keychain <laughs> access, and I'm just like, ah, uh, it's like it's like network connection secure. Like I can never remember it on the spot. I'm just like, ah, no. Then I always have to Google it. They go yep. to the same purpled article that I always <laughs> click on to find how to do this. I'm like, oh, it's called keychain access. But that's sick. So you can just make a QR code, yeah. skip the process. That is one thing that Android is really good at is you can you can do that right like, in your phone, which is yeah. kind of sick. Like it's just like a part of you, you <laughs> click on Wi Fi, it's like share network, they can scan yeah. your phone. It's pretty yeah. Yeah. Pretty nice. But there's it's good to know because I also use Apple products. It's good to know there's an easier way to do that. Yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of like Android features that are just native that like Apple's just not. Yeah. Like <laughs> It's like, come on! This is this is such an easy feature. Yeah. Why does this have to be like an automated shortcut? Yeah. Like, why isn't this just built into like the operating system? It could be. It could be easier. Yeah. But yeah, it's but, not about easiness. It's no. about aesthetic. But like, I mean, like with with that, like you get like it's it's short. The shortcuts app is just super robust in general. Yeah. And so like you can. You know, like you can create like these action steps and then you can like yeah. start automating like things so that way like it picks up like you said like every two weeks or every yeah. week. And like it just starts running these like actions mm-hmm. like without you even having to process them. Dude, that sounds like a game changer for any kind of Apple user. But it it honestly changed the way I communicate specifically with like a large number of people. Yeah. And so like having to consistently so like for me, like I have like on a monthly basis, I reach out to roughly around like forty people. Yeah. You know. And so being able just to be like, like, hey, how are things going? Like, is yeah. everything good? 
like means that like for 40 people, I don't have to actively remember I need to send out these messages. Sure. And yeah. so like it can puts complete communication or it yeah. puts the ball of communication in their court. Yeah. And if they push it back on me, like awesome, I can I I get it, I respond, I yeah. can keep going. If they don't respond, like it's like okay. Yeah, but it makes sense to like preemptively keep projects going, you know, kind of yep. a thing. Like I'm thinking again through like other like independent creatives or business owners to be able to like check in with clients. Like it'll just be like, hey, mm-hmm. like how's it going? How's or even follow up after a project closes and you're just like, hey, it's been two months since our rebrand. Just wanted to check in, see how business is going. See how yep. that is one of those things that takes you to the next level mm-hmm. as a business is just being able to follow up and keep that relationship. And that's not something you have to even think about. Like you could have set that up to happen as soon as you close the project and you're not even thinking about it. And then on some random Tuesday, you get the credit for being super intentional and following up on like what's going on with them. And it's like, I mean, you can probably set up infinite, an infinite number of these, yeah, like check ins or schedule sends or different stuff like that. So it's like, so like, bro, so like workflow wise, you can have like an initial client meeting, you know, and they, they just jump on board. Yeah. And they're like, all right. So like, this project's going to last like three months. You yeah. know what I mean? And like in three months, you're going to get like X, Y, and Z. So it's like perfect, you know? Yeah. When you send out like that email, that first initial email of like, yeah. hey, like thanks so much for meeting with me. These are like the action steps or this is what we talked about. Yeah. You can go into like into shortcuts and like every two weeks shoot out a message to this person saying, hey, just following up, making sure that everything's good on your end. Yeah. Is there any new updates that you need to let me know about? Yeah. You know, after like the first three months, you know, just doing like, hey, this is a monthly check-in. Yeah. How's everything going? Is everything good? Yeah. Do you have any complaints? You need to just let me know. You know okay, what I mean? Yeah. Do you think like we're meeting the the you know, do you think we're meeting what uh, what's dictated on the contract? Sure. You know, and then like after the the contract's over at the three months, it's like, hey, yeah, like just following up, seeing how you're doing. And like you created now like at least ten different automated messages yeah. that you just spent fifteen minutes in that first like right after that first initial meeting setting up. Yeah. That you don't have to think about anymore. Yeah, true. You know, and, and it's, it's just in the form of a text message. Like mm-hmm. it's a personal thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just like a generic Exactly. You know, thing. It's like very person to person and it feels more genuine. And it is intention. Like it's just like you get to schedule that, you know. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to just rely on you thinking like, hey, this is a good idea. I should send this out. It's yep. like this could be a part of a process that anybody could do, you know, in your system, you know. And like the thing is like you can even like do emails with it. So okay, it's like yeah. you know, so essentially you can have like a like a bootleg like MailChimp. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it you sounds know? like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, it, sick. It just like it I'm telling you, as soon as like I started automating my communications with people, yeah. like it made things a lot easier on my end where it's like, okay, I don't have to exert like X amount of mental energy to remember to message somebody or email somebody or get in contact with somebody. Yeah. Dude, that makes so much sense. That's awesome. So okay, it sounds like your three are like just walk me through your your thought process and like why you chose the three that you chose and like how that covers pretty much everything that you need to be the most productive yeah. version of yourself. So yeah, yeah. So my three apps being Freeform, you know, Free Notion, and then Shortcuts. So Freeform pretty much takes care of anything that's handwritten or anything that needs to be sketched out, mm-hmm. like my visual like notes essentially. Yeah, it's just having like that whiteboard, like that notebook in my pocket at all times. Yeah, um, Notion is. For organizing the craziness that comes out of freeform, yeah, you know, making sure that's clear, it's cut, and then using Notion's AI to make sure that all types of communication that I'm using, that I'm sending out or doing whatever, is clear and understandable. Yeah, and then shortcuts, being able to use like the messaging and the email communication features, make sure that I am consistently. Having solid communication with whoever I need to communicate with, yeah, without having to try to overthink it, yeah. No, that makes sense. So it's like free form for the sketchbook ideas yeah. for getting you know those little notes. Notion is a little bit more advanced, robust, like text based organization, more like yep. big form text, right? Where yeah. you can, like you can have entire documents, you can store entire conversations, yep. And then it's also creating action steps like writing emails and. Mm-hmm. Writing actual content in it, and then even project management. Yeah, you know. true. Keeping you know. track of like everything that you're working on, mm-hmm. and then like the last one is really for that communication, that person to person, like 
automating it as much as you can yep. ahead of time to just like stay on top of it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That makes sense. So like with those three, would you feel confident like like with nothing else, like cutting out anything else, staying productive and staying the most productive version of yourself? I think I that's the thing. I think I can. Yeah. Like there's definitely other apps that I use, you know. Yeah. Hands down. Sure. There's a plethora, but those three specifically, like if I only had to use those three, yeah. I could still operate like decently well. Yeah. You know, with those three. Yeah. I think they cover a lot of things and I I think in other use cases too, even if you're not like, you know, a business owner or, you know, independent creative, but rather more like a student, like using those mm-hmm. three for like note taking or in class or for collaborative projects or different stuff like that, like all three of those tools would actually be incredible for all those things, you know. Yeah. Like even I'm thinking through the automation side too of like in what's the last app called that you mentioned? Shortcuts. Shortcuts. Like you could automate like friendships or just like checking in with people, just like <laughs> you know, like if you're that person who's like really bad at texting back, yep. you could just be like, you know what? I'm just gonna like auto reply just something, just like, hey man, how's <laughs> it going to just like not be the guy who's never texting back because. I don't know. Yep. I don't know why that applies to me or why I thought that that would be a good idea. But yeah, interesting for people who struggle with that. Yeah, just yeah, just a you, thought. You're not the guy. Yeah, yeah. no, not me. I mean, other people who struggle with texting back. Um, <laughs> I like looked while we're recording. I have like 15 text messages that are unread. I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, but so, actually, that's yeah. another feature with shortcuts. Wait, what? If, if someone like specifically texts you, yeah, you can create a automated like message back to them. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. So you can have it be prompted by stuff that other people send you. Mm-hmm. Whoa. So like if I so like if you were to text me, yeah. And if you were to say like any keyword, like let's say podcast. Sure. Like I could have like a preset message yeah. that would like just automatically recent like send back to you yeah. because the key phrase you use was podcast. That's so sick. Yeah. So it could be keyword specific mm-hmm. triggering certain things. That's yep. nuts. You just got, you know, it's just, you got to dig into it a little bit, but like it's there. All right. So, with those three apps, you feel pretty confident that you could conquer the world creatively, yeah. handle your own. You're not going to miss others too much. You're not going to miss Tick Tick. I'm surprised you didn't mention Tick Tick. Listen, Tick Tick was very close. Yeah. Very close. The only reason why Tick Tick didn't make it was because Notion could technically do project management too. It can. It's true. Yeah. Well, here's the thing I will bring up Tick Tick, but on. Another episode, because for today, I think we're just going to stick with with your apps, and we'll do a part two, and we'll talk through my three favorite productivity apps. Because honestly, there's a lot of good stuff here. I love talking about Notion, because it is a very robust app. Yep. But those are three good ones. I don't think many Apple users would know the tools that you even mentioned. Because, I mean, maybe every, you know people who are on the inside know. But I did not know they had like an automated... Yep. like. Anything, honestly. <laughs> so, like, that seems pretty advanced. I'm like, dang, do I need an iPhone to be able to send text from that automated app? Maybe. But yeah, we're going to do a part two where I'm going to talk through my favorite productivity apps more from a business owner's perspective. A lot of mine have to do with more like automating parts of your business workflow and keeping tasks organized and client inflow organized. So, for the business owners, it'll be more interesting that way. But we'll do a part two at some point and you can quiz me right. on my favorite ones and also gives me more time to decide what <laughs> my three are if I'm only living with three. Because I'm like, yeah, my list is like 10 yeah. that I actively use yep. in running a business. So we'll have to, we'll figure that out. But yeah, I'm not stalling. It's just <laughs> we're, we're, we're cut for time. Uh, the producers are waving us off the stage. <laughs> so we, we got to go. But yeah, man, those are great apps. Please go and use all three of those apps. We'll get the names of all three of those apps in the show notes so you can download them. We'll get links to them as well so you can use them. And get your productivity going. Because I think, honestly, one of the hardest parts of becoming a professional creative is learning to get organized. Yes. And so hopefully you guys learn some tools that will help you in automating your life, whether it's writing AI-powered emails for you (laughs) or... Following up with your friends automatically if they say the certain keyword that you plug into (laughs) shortcuts. Maybe that's not what you're supposed to get out of it. That's what I got out of it. But yeah, hopefully you learn to be a little bit more productive in your creative life as you produce or as you pursue a creative lifestyle. And yeah, hopefully this podcast helps you. So, like I said, look out for part two where we talk about other productivity apps that I use 
And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Any other thoughts on productivity, Julian? Any other thoughts on your apps you want to talk about? No, as long as you're just being productive, man. Yeah. The more productive you are, like the easier your life gets. Yeah. So use these tools, get productive, make your life easier <laughs> through Notion and shortcuts. And yeah, you'll be happier for it. Oh, yeah. So anyways, thank you guys all for listening. We appreciate all the likes, all the yes. messages. We appreciate the feedback too. It's helpful as we build the show to learn like what people are listening to. Oh. Have you noticed more people talking to you about AI this past week? <laughs> I have. I've had multiple conversations with yeah. people. Like, <laughs> like, ask. like no, no, even warm up either. People would be like, "So, do you really think AI art's a good idea?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Hey, bro, what's up?" Like, they're like, I feel like we might have touched on some heated issues, but oh, yeah. I do appreciate that people are talking to us about the podcast. It means you guys are listening. So. Please reach out to us on Instagram if you have other apps that we miss too. I mm. want to know other productivity apps. Julian and I are always looking for, for productivity apps. So please DM us your favorite productivity apps, ones that we're missing out on. If you're like, Notion's trash, this other new <laughs> one's better. We want to hear it and we will debate yes. you if you message us. But uh, yeah, please reach out and we can all stay productive, stay creative. Yeah. And yeah, that's all for today. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening. See ya. See ya. Yeah. Yeah. What? Follow us on socials at token.brand and visit us online at tokencreative.co. Hello there.